Hey y'all, it's Anime Gaming, and today I'm going to be reviewing episode 15 of You Know. And this episode was, whoo! It was actually pretty good, I gotta say. Because for one, while there wasn't action or drama like some of the other You Know episodes, I like how this episode is more of a character-centered piece. And it finally focused on some characters that were not Takya, which don't get me wrong. Y'all know my favorite character in the show is the man, Takya. But... I like how this episode instead focuses on giving Mio and Kana some character development. So that was pretty nice. Because I like how in this episode you see them go on the villa that her father owns Mio. And, and I like how throughout this episode there was some humor in her slice, like Saints. And she actually said stuff like she actually lied to her dad saying that she was hanging out with the girlfriends so that his dad wouldn't have a fit. So stuff like that really made the episode lively. And I like how at the same time, though, while it was a relaxed episode, it did progress the plot somewhat because you did have Hojo kind of stalk him around and Taki had to do some smart maneuvering in order to get, in order to like make sure that they avoid Hojo. So that was also another nice element of this episode that I liked too. So this episode did some really, really nice stuff, I gotta say. Then, in addition for this in addition to the episode doing stuff like that, I did like how as it progressed, you saw Kana having fun, and you even have her say herself that she was having fun, and then she was actually smiling as the episode progressed. Like whenever she did things with some of the other characters, you could see she was smiling, and she was even actively participating in the fun stuff that they were doing. Like for example, in an earlier scene they had to use the watermelon to trick Kojo into going into a trance so that he would stop talking, stalking Saki, Takia and Kana and Mio and Yuki. So they used the watermelon and then Kana went search on, searched around for a watermelon so that they can use to have their game where they split it open. And you know what? I like sequences like that because it shows you that Kana is used to social settings to a certain extent because she was able to pick up on, all right, there's no watermelon? gonna get at myself so that the funk can keep on going and I like that it shows you a grasp of her street smarts and then in addition to giving us some kind of characterization I also like how it even mentions that she's her heart beats quickly I mean it, it beats a bit hard when she's around Takia and she actually says this to Mio herself and I like that too because you see these two characters bond because they're sharing personal things with each other even Mio looks mentions that she that her heart ex herself also beats a bit quicker when she's around Tokyo. So those sequences were also street right there and I really liked it. It's because you have Kana opening herself more to other people and I like that too. And aside from having Kana character development because now she's more open, she smiles more, and she discusses things about herself to other people more. I also like the meal character development too. She's now more comfortable about Kana because at the start she was kind of getting jealous that Kana got a bit more attention like when she was pouting. But then as the episode progressed and she got to know Kana more, Mio didn't make those kind of pouty faces anymore. If anything, they, you could tell they really enjoyed each other's companies. So I also like that too. It made the episode a much more full of experience. And that's why I thought it did really well from a character standpoint. As, even though it put Taki on the backseat. And even with Taki in the backseat, it did kind of develop him too. Because it, sh it shows you that he became less overly dependent on the reflector device. Because just compare it at the start of the series, when they were taking like these exams, Taki would just use a reflector device con a few times to try to get the right answer. Here, he makes a mistake, but this time, he actually it goes through with it when like this wall dog messes up the cabin a bit and then he says you only have one shot at youth showing off that he's becoming less overly dependent on the device and showing you that he's growing mentally too as an individual and that's what I also love about this episode subtle amounts of character development so that's all from a character standpoint I thought this episode hit it off pretty well and it introduces a mystery too from a story standpoint because while we didn't make the grandest amount of plot progression it didn't end off on a cliffhanger when you see Kana fall on the floor. And she fucking... Oh, that cliffhanger. It's gonna make me eagerly anticipate what's gonna happen next week now. Damn. 
But aside from having a really good cliffhanger, I like the start where it shows you this woman that looks like Kana, who was also spending time with Takya's father, Takya's mother, and little Takya himself, which makes me wonder, so could that be Kana's mother then, or, or could that be Kana herself? I don't even know. But that's also another thing about this episode. It gave you snippets of intrigue, so that in the back of your mind, you don't let your guard down completely, even though there was some nice fan service and some nice character moments. So I also like that too. It shows you that the writing staff, they really know what they're doing in this specific episode. And as for the weaknesses in this episode, I would say really the only weakness was the animation. Like when they were on the beach, there were kind of, there were like still shots, like when Mio and Connor were on like Banana Boat and Yuki and um, Taka were surfing. It was kind of a still shot there. So there were some moments of weak animation, but I ain't gonna hop on it too much because this isn't an action or drama certain episode. But I still have to mention it because I can't just ignore that. I mean, if it's there, I gotta mention it because there are some animes that are nothing but slice of life, but they can animate each and every bit of their 25, 26, 12 episode runs pretty well. So that's why I can't necessarily ignore the animation, even though it wasn't a big issue for me. The standard's been set by other slice of life animes in the past. But it still got the job done just barely though. And the art was nice. It was on model this time. Only a few instances where there are some far away shots where you don't see the eyes drawn. But other than that, thought it was pretty well done, the art. Soundtrack, got the job done, and voice performances were great. And that's the overall of a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being um, abysmal, 10 being exceptional, and 5 being average. I thought it was a 6 out of 10. I thought it was good. Yeah! Wasn't the best episode, but it wasn't bad. I enjoyed it. So, anyways, guys and girls, in my thoughts on, you know, episode 15. Be sure to comment down your thoughts in the comments down below. Be sure to rate the video subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and have a great and safe day. All right, bye-bye, everyone.